high on the steam factor. Biden and Harris won the election and they go into the White House this January. Plus, breaking news. The tribute to the icon, Alex Trebek. The steam factor starts right now. Good evening, everyone. This is your truly Mr. Steven, and welcome to a very special edition on the Steven Factors, Steven Nations 2020. Now, if you heard the news for the past 24 hours ago that Joseph Biden became becoming as our next 46th president elect of the United States, plus we have <laughs> Kamala Harris became as our first female and our first women of color as a madam vice president of the United States. And um, I really don't know how to say this. I have no words to describe right now, but I have to tell you anyway, it was historic to be honest with you. It's like 2008, all over again with a reverse and um uh, and i really don't know how to say this but um this is um uh, completely a, a blessing and what a relief that we have outstanding two outstanding icons will definitely going to save our country um, uh, let me tell you the, the whole story about what happened since yesterday. Uh, my mom was at the, at the clinic and I'm special. I'm in the late, uh, waiting room. I was trying to listen to music a little bit. Um, the ballots is still continue because of the mail ballots of the voting. And I will explain to you all of that in just a few minutes here. But like I said, it was on Saturday morning. And um listen to music. Well, I'm still watching CNN and thank God they put on CNN because I really don't know what's going on in this situation because I'm getting nervous, you know. And um uh, there's uh outstanding um ladies um are watching as well. Um they they are hoping praying that this history will definitely not make. And all of a sudden, when John King still calculated the maps, I see what's going on, which states to see who's going to win. There's a... Oh, boy. There's a name on the bottom called CNN Projection, which is on standby. And when I look, I was like, oh my God, this is it. The moment, the, it's the moment of truth here. So it is the moment of truth. Huh? When Wolf Blister made the announcement and it's been project that Joseph Biden is our president. And I was so shook. I was so freaked out. I was screaming. I was cheering. And it was my blowing experience. It's like 2008 all over again, like I said. I was jumping over that. I would use my arms rise. I say, yes. Yes, what a relief. Yes, I said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And and it was like, it seems like you've been watching like a, a World Series or something. And it was incredible. Incredible, to be honest with you. And, um, been watching it all day and saw a wonderful speech last night 
And it was amazing. And people in the whole Brooklyn are celebrating. The celebrating of relief and joy. And it was completely amazing and blessing. And I just wanted to give my mother a hug, but I had to wait until in the afternoon. But when she came out, I just tried to give her a hug. I told mommy, we did it. We won. And um, and for the first time ever, we never seen a woman. We'll definitely become as our vice president. I think Kamala Harris will do the job as well. And I believe all the women could stand up to the believing, stand up to their own rights and show their own pride and their dignity and respect. And I hope Kamala Harris will do the good job as our Madam Vice President. Now, just want to let you know, man, I I didn't cry. Well, I cried a little bit, but I didn't even cry a lot. I called my family and everything. It was a blessing. And even I called my family from in Santo Domingo. It was a true blessing. And um, like I said, I called my friends. I, I went to my neighbor's house uh, last night and across the hall. We've been talking like more than like three to four minutes or so. It was it was amazing. Since Joseph and and Kamala will become as our new president and our Madam Vice President, they have to explain to us what we're gonna do, what's going on for four years. Now, right now the pandemic is still at large. Um we, we need to bring back Dr. Anthony Fauci to explain and what we're going to do to protect our safety and also science. And science is the most important thing in this world. You know, yesterday Donald Trump was doing golfing and he's been revealed that he knew the results, but he's not a casino yet. But it's been revealed they're going to bring all these legal team to check and see what's going on in Supreme Court. But you know what? It was completely baloney. There's no evidence to see what's going on with this voting fraud. Donald Trump thinks that they steal his election ballots. But that's not the case. It was revealed that the all melee ballots are, did not deliver. There are dozens of people doing early voting right before the election starts. And um, and that's why they didn't even show up so far from Arizona to Georgia to Nevada. But in Pennsylvania, they nailed Joseph Biden to become a victory. Look what happened on yesterday. 49.7%. In the lead. And that's why Joseph Biden became our, become our new president, elect. Now, Donald Trump got 49.1%. And they still wait for these uh, mailing ballots in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, um, Pittsburgh, and, and uh, Army, Pennsylvania. But they still got to win most votes. Georgia, on the other hand, well, they still had tied, but the votes still continue to be counted. Same thing from Nevada. Still continue to be counted. But what about North Carolina? It is full red, but it's not flipping at this time because it's the melee ballots. And they had to keep counting and counting at least like, it will take like two and a half weeks by four before Thanksgiving. And now Donald Trump decided to bring all this information to court with evidence. 
But there's no evidence about voting frauds, folks. It's over. The election is over. Get a grip. Donald Trump will surrender. He will definitely concede with Joseph Biden. And he's fell miserably. Very, very fell miserably. I just want to say, um, thank God on this beautiful day. The sun is shining. People are rejoicing. And remember the Bible says, um, this is the day that the Lord has, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And as Jericho said that my fellow Americans our long national nightmare is over. And our nightmare is over indeed. Four years is enough. From pandemic. From. Racism. To the economy. It feels like you're in backwards. From civil rights movement. To the Great Depression. And the Spanish flu back in 1918. And some people want to vote for Donald Trump. For stimulus checks, give me a break. It's not going to happen. They're not giving those stimulus checks no more, man. We need to get back to work and start creating more small businesses. We need to help President Biden about what his strategies are. Now, this is going to be my new strategies for Biden and Harris. Coronavirus, that's the main issue. That's number one. Number two, and racial injustice. It's been 400 years. We need to sign, they need to sign that bill for and racial injustice. That's number two. Number three, find their parents and the kids who are being separated from the camp. And they need to reunite their own loved ones. That's number three. Create small businesses and bring the economy back. That's number four. So this is going to be the four issues, on my opinion. And my bonus, when the pandemic is finally over, we could finally meet our friends and family and family once again. And I'll definitely go back to church, including my Apostle Church Brooklyn. I love you all, and I hope I'll see you back real soon until this pandemic ends, because we have to keep patient and have faith, and that's the most important. And also, we need to wear masks, because those masks could save lives. And we need to put that on every single day. From indoor to outdoor. And I know some people could breathe or not breathe. Just take it off for at least three seconds and put it back on. But we needed to put on our mask for our safety. And, um, and I know how God really showed us from the Bible because this book what happens in the future. And also I made a political theory last April, which is finally came true from the book of Exodus when Moses told his Pharaoh to free his people and he refused. So he decided to give him a final judgment. From hail to plague, which is a coronavirus. You have to put the blood sheets up. You have to take out uh, the lamb. You have to take out the blood of the lamb and put the cross at each doors. 
Same thing that um uh, my 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 aunt just put a palm cross in front of the door. Same thing what happened like for over two thousand years since Moses trying to take out the blood of the lamb, put the cross on each door, and you have to let the virus pass. And also I predict that Donald Trump will lose his reelection. And that's it. That's my my <laughs> my biblical theory. And especially for the evangelists of trying to predict that Donald Trump will will win for a second term and all kind of BS. Just shut up. Just shut up. You're not trying to create predictions here. Only God makes his own predictions. He knows what he did, which is right. And maybe this week, hopefully, I will talk to my friend Emily. And we're going to talk about um, the Republicans and televangelists. And some, um, the, they think that a rapture is coming, which is not true and everything. Uh, we will definitely look on that this week. But, um, but for now, I just want to say congratulations to Joseph Biden and Kamala Harris. Made their history. Um, I hope that they will help our country. I hope we could listen what they say and do what we had to do. And I hope this four years will be bigger and better than ever. Um, let's go on the map and um, and how it went down since yesterday. Now. Make no mistake. Um, this is how this is her. This is how they left off. Uh, oh no, let me dim this. Uh, if I will, okay, there it is. Now make no mistake. We have a blue wave, and Joseph Biden is our president. Now we have that Joseph Biden is have two hundred and ninety electoral votes so far and still counting uh president trump got um 214 it's still counting but remember uh i will let's check it out in south and north carolina uh they're still postponed it at this time but donald trump was in the lead for uh for 51 i mean for 50.1 percent and he got over right two thousand two million seven hundred and thirty three thousand uh six hundred forty five votes counted, and he was in the lead that time, while Joseph Biden got like forty eight um seven percent for two million six hundred fifty eight thousand two hundred seventy four votes at this time, but let's take a look at Pennsylvania, my second hometown from Philly, give a shout out to my friends from Philadelphia from here, uh, to all the Johns from Jenny and Chris. And, um, look at what did, look at they, look at they have so far from Allentown to Philadelphia, and they got some most votes over there. But as you can see, uh, Biden got like 49.8% in the lead. Which means he got like 3,362,018 votes. But Donald Trump got like 49.1%. And he got four for his electoral votes. And the votes were counted like 3,000, uh, I mean 3,316,291. And it still keep going, but, um, but um, it is what it is, but. Everything's been vote counted by mail. So that's why, oh, excuse me, 
So that's why they had to keep voting by mail in each state. But let's take a look at Nevada. Uh, Nevada got like 50.2. It is over. We have like 664,162 vote has been counted. It's from, it's from Reno to Las Vegas. And it was sealed in. It was 100% sealed in. So you know how it goes. Arizona sealed in. Everything sealed in. We have 49.5%. We have 1,643,664 votes are counted. Uh, again, 49.5 electoral votes. But Donald Trump got like 49%. But Georgia, the other hand, let's take a look from Georgia. Uh, no. Wrong state. Yes. Joseph Biden got like 49.5 electoral votes with 2,465,781. Uh, but there's no projecting at this time because of the mail ballots. And that's why Donald Trump and the illegal team are being suing uh, about this situation. Uh, hopefully they're going to take it to the Supreme Court and evidence will not be found at this time. But like I said, history is written. History is made uh, and it's official. Joseph Biden and Kamala Harris won the election and that's it. It's over and we knew it's over. That's it. Um... Uh, before I'm going to close, uh, if you heard the breaking news uh, from this morning, we lost some of the, the greatest icons of all time named Alex Trebek, who was the host of Jeopardy for more over 30 years, has died of stage four pancreatic cancer. When I was a kid, uh, for the person to know, as a kid, I always grew up with watching Jeopardy. And uh, he, Alex Trebek was a wonderful guy with a great heart, with a great outstanding sense of humor. Even the theme song is so catchy as well. Um, he was a wonderful treasure and a legend. He always... A wonderful generosity and respect. Um, he knew that he could finally defeat his disease. But his disease got him. And he knew that it is time to meet with the Lord. And without Alex, Jeopardy will not going to be the same. But you could watch Alex Trebek, his final episodes until December 25th, which is on Christmas Day. And it's already been taped since a couple of summers ago. Uh, thank God for that. So we could watch Alex Trebek more often until his final episode were going to last. And even the new host of the Jeopardy is... Too early close to call as yet. But right now, uh, we're continuing of his grief, his sadness, and hopefully that Jeopardy will continue to heal. The show will go on. And... I'm sorry, I just, I have no words to describe right now, but he was in a better place. And if you love him or hate him, you always respect him and he will always respect you spiritually. 
Rest in peace, Alex. Sleep well. Hey everyone, Mr. Steven here. Thank you so much for watching for the all new episode of The Steven Factor. If you want to learn more about my show, go to the YouTube channel and click subscribe. And also click the notification bell to see one of my newest, latest videos. Todo para la familia.